Welcome back, my friends, to another unsolicited and uneducated football analysis by your friend David Valentin. My apologies, missed last game. Uh, basically, I was feeling a little bit under the weather. I had a slight fever, nothing that would have deterred me from going to the game. But unfortunately, it was high enough that they would have, uh, you know, not granted me access to the stadium. We have to remind everybody that outside the stadium, they are still taking temperatures. So, uh, sadly, I had to go home. Uh, this guy wasn't feeling well because I was working in the heat. I was a little dehydrated. And I, did I pick the wrong day to miss a game? Orlando City defeats Atlanta United 3-2 in what can be said as a... Uh, psychological victory because this really pumped our fan base. We finally were able to tell Joseph Martinez, you are not the father, get out of here. I really wanted to tell him that to his face, but unfortunately that's football. Before that game, Orlando City unfortunately had a 5-0 defeat at New York City. Uh, we basically were missing nine out of our 11 starters. It was a disastrous game, but that's how it is in football. Sometimes this sport can be cruel. So what do we have tonight? Wednesday. Well, I can tell you that for Miami, it's going to be a very long night. Inter Miami comes to town for the first time this season. And I have to tell you, they are having the worst time possible. Dead last in the league. They just won a game, their first home game of the season, almost five months into the season. Uh, and uh, I have to tell you that it, today is not going to be easy. Montreal pretty much gifted them that victory. The two-goal score was one at Stupid giveaway. I think Montreal probably will want that back. Uh, Gonzalo Higuain basically couldn't have missed from there. And then also a PK, which he nailed. Uh, other than that, uh, Orlando, although it has some injuries, uh, Pedro Alese is questionable tonight. Uh, they Orlando really, uh, after defeating Atlanta, which by the way, Atlanta played a very good game. I don't want you to think that just because they're, uh, they fired their manager, and by the way, Orlando City legend Rob Valentino is doing a fantastic job guiding those guys in Atlanta. They really, they, the guys, the, the Atlanta players look like they really like him and have embraced him. And uh, it took a moment of brilliance, two moments of brilliance, I should say, from um, Van der Water to basically uh, sealed the deal. The man had an assist and a goal, so did Nani. But, uh, Van der Water, when he came in, he really, really turned the game upside down to the point where, um, you know, Joseph Martinez probably looked like, uh, uh, not probably, he looked like a Mack truck just hit him head on while he wasn't waiting for it. So, tonight, uh, is for pride and honor, uh, just not another three points. What I expect Orlando City to do tonight is destroy uh, uh, destroy uh, Miami. And a lot of people ask me, David, why is it that Orlando City fans have this huge animosity against Miami fans? Well, it is because while we were going through our lean years, our years of suffering and uh, turmoil, they used to come to our timeline, laugh about us, and tell us that when Daddy David Beckham uh, came to, uh, when he was supposed to come to town, he was supposed to come to town with with Messi and Ronaldo, and they were gonna bury us. And uh, then they they did a lot of things on social media with supposed fans burning our our jersey and then putting on their theirs and all this crap that they were going to be so awesome. And they are dead last in the league while we are in second place in the East, fourth in the league. We're making playoffs, people. We're making playoffs and they are not. And tonight, 
they return back to Exploria for the first time since they assaulted our mascot, since they poured beer on fans, since they threw cans on families, uh, since they assaulted women and children and old people, since they had to be arrested and kicked out from the stadium. It's a Wednesday night. I don't expect those bums to have to call in to their factory jobs, uh, landscaping jobs, uh, gas station jobs. I don't expect them to take the day off to come up here. Uh, the, the turnpike is too expensive for them. And I don't even think that the jalopies they drive can make it five miles out of Fort Lauderdale. So I, I don't expect a, lot, a big group out of them on a Wednesday night. But whatever bums show up, they better be ready because we're going to bring the heat. And I can guarantee you that Nani is already taking this personal and our boys are more than ready to prove to these bums once and for all that Florida is purple. Usually Wednesday night games are quiet affairs, but not this time. You talk too much crap and we're gonna teach you a lesson. Let's go to the stadium, see what the night uh, has in, in store for us.
conocimiento uh,
Too much master. They have disallowed that goal. You be the judge. I'm recording right behind goal. So you guys get to your own conclusion.
Alright my friends, so the end of the game, 1-1, one, one. to me, feels like a defeat. We had the victory. Tesho Candela's goal was an old, uh, you, uh, you can review the goal here a thousand times. I haven't been home to have the advantage of seeing the replay. To me, it was a good goal, but that's how it is sometimes. We take the point, if we were playing anybody else, uh, would it, nobody here will be complaining about the fact that um, that we had the three, all three points and we just sort of let them get away from us. Um, but the uh, reality of it all is that when you are winning, if you let the ball in, that tie will always, always, always feel like a defeat. Um, anyways, we continue to be in the second place in the East, uh, Inter Wasteman Miami remains dead last in the league, dead last in the East. So I'm not going to, uh, you know, cry foul, they, they played a good, uh, they played a good game. But 
they did not deserve the point in my opinion um we'll be seeing them later on this month back here it's gonna be a friday uh i expect uh, a better orlando daryl dk back on the lineup um uh maybe we have a signing uh this thursday as i'm recording this is wednesday night so tomorrow night is the last day for the uh transfer window in mls that means that by the time you are probably watching this it has been closed so that means that orlando better uh you know close the books on on some signings i feel that our attack uh, needs some pep um last goal was um was by a defender uh we had two goals by defenders uh lately uh we're not seeing anything from our strikers when technically the only striker that we had today was was Tasho because Benji's a winger and uh I think you know I think we did okay but we definitely deserved the three points um we held our own and uh you know like I said um three or four years ago when we were in Miami shoes today we would have called it uh we would have been celebrating because we saved face went to their house uh, got a point. They didn't defeat us. Yay! So that, that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, we're much better than that. I think um, the fact that we had Antonio Carlos off the pitch after that a horrible headbutt, uh, and most likely he's gonna be out maybe a week or two, maybe three, to be honest with you. Uh, it's gonna alter how we uh, shape up defensively. I think uh, Rodrigo Schlegel is a more than capable substitute, but in my opinion, uh, he lacks a little bit of the quality that we get from from uh, Antonio Carlos. So in conclusion, um, Orlando City will be heading out to uh, Cincinnati this weekend. Uh, not an easy uh, team to play. They have a very small pitch, one of the smallest in MLS. Uh, if you want to know about that, I made a video about uh, small pitches. New York City has the smallest, followed by Portland and Cincinnati, who basically have the same measurement. Uh, it's going to be a smaller pitch. It's going to be a faster game, so and it's going to be away. So, in my opinion, any team that right now is below the red line, we have still points away from them. This game officially is the 17th game for the season. That means that we are halfway done. We got 17 more to go. Um, at the end of August, the the playoff picture should be uh, should be solid. I do not expect any changes from the positions five and above, six and seven make uh, exchange hands depending on what happens. For Orlando City not to make playoffs, something disastrous has to happen uh, for them to, to drop. And Orlando City has a very good um, calendar uh, in the month of August. It's gonna get tight and difficult in September and uh, also in October as we close the season. But by then, like I said, uh, we should uh, we should be in contention, and the only thing that we should be uh, worried about is staying in positions one to four in order to host uh, a game. Actually, I'm sorry, yeah, one to five to host a game because the number position number one gets a buy in the first week. So two, three, four, five. Uh, I'm sorry, two, three, four host and uh, one gets to buy and host so yes uh, and I'm sorry I'm, I'm driving I'm being distracted at the same time so yes we have to uh, finish in the top four positions to host if you're not hosting an MLS is very difficult uh, to win a game um, and if you look if you don't believe me um, you can look at the teams that hosted and most of them won their games uh, New England Surprisingly, uh, aside from the initial game, uh, the thing was the playing, they had to play in the road, um, and uh, they were the outlier.
uh, amazed that they did not uh, went to um, MLS Cup. But with that said, thank you, my friends. Thank you for watching. Uh, please uh, like, subscribe, um, and see you next time. Oh, before that, next uh, home game uh, is actually going to be Open Cup against Santos Laguna. So I, it's a first for Orlando City international competition. So that's next Thursday. Uh, expect, uh, expect a video on that. My intentions are to go to that game. See you guys later. Vamos Orlando.